Today we'll show you how to grow your network and build your audience for your web series with community director Brie Castellini, right here on No Rest for the Weekend. Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, the show where we talk to the creators of independent film and series. I'm your host, Victoria Oliver. One of the hardest things for content creators to do is to build a community of collaborators and find an audience. Brie Castellini is the community director for Starable.com, a site that's become the largest community of web series creators and fans. She is also an award-winning independent filmmaker. She is the creator and star of the web series Brains, as well as the executive producer of Relativity and producer of Stray. Our very own Jason Godby had a chance to speak with her in the studio and talk about how to build a community and grow an audience. Hi, it's Jason Godby for No Rest of the Weekend. I'm here in the studio with Brie Castellini. Uh, she is the community director for Starable.com. Welcome, Brie. Thank you so much for having me today. So, Bree, just to uh, just to start us off, give me a little bit of uh, background on yourself. Sure. So I got my Bachelor of Arts in Creative Writing in Oregon after growing up in Colorado. And I was a prose writer for most of that. I wrote a, a novel for my senior thesis and I was sort of floundering. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do next. It, the best option seemed to be working at a coffee shop and writing novels on the side, um, which, you know, sounds very romantic, but also kind of boring. And then in, in between my junior and senior years of college, I was listening to this podcast called the Nerdist Writers Panel, which was um, a panel of TV writers each week. There were like two or three different TV writers. I was a big fan of TV and I would listen to them talk about making their shows and I realized slowly that the type of writing that they were talking about was like the ideal type of writing for me. You know, I, I, I it was exactly what I wanted to be doing. So I applied to one graduate school uh, to get my MFA in writing and producing for television. I got accepted by the only one I applied to, LIU Brooklyn, and uh, that's how I moved to New York. And then you somehow came to Sterable.com. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we did interview Ajay um, Ajay Kishore from Starable, but for those who didn't hear or see that episode, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about Starable. Sure. So Starable is the largest community of web series creators and fans. We have a couple of different websites serving slightly different purposes. Starable.com is sort of a catalog of web series because they are so there are so many places that you can find them online. You can find them on YouTube and Vimeo primarily, but if you just search for web series and YouTube or Vimeo, your search results are going to be kind of wonky. Um, so Starable seeks to catalog all of the incredible independent television online and um, make it easy to discover via genre, via keywords, and by user reviews. So the best stuff kind of gets to the top and you don't have to hope that the YouTube search algorithm is going to get something good. So you guys basically, you curate web series. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how did you come there and, and sort of, can you tell me a bit about your role there in terms of what does a community director do? Yeah, of course. Um, so I met Starable via social media. I w I'm a web series creator myself, and I was sort of searching around for places that I could promote and things like that, and I got connected to Starable. And after attending a couple of their happy hours in New York, I just started to, to really get into what they were doing, and it seemed like I was a perfect fit for you know something that they needed, which was a filmmaker on staff. All of the, the people at Starable are incredibly smart people, but they didn't have somebody who was directly in the, the community of people that they wanted to serve, and I fit that role perfectly. So that's how I started working there, first part-time and then now full-time as a community director. And uh, what a community director does, at least in, in my case, is I largely moderate and schedule events for our Filmmaker Forum, which is our, our new website. It's a place where all web series creators from the high school students who are making a web series to you know, 30, 40, 50 somethings who just need a place to connect and ask questions of each other and attend events that I schedule like uh, Reddit style AMAs, which are just sort of a live Q&A online so that different experts in the web series world can give advice to, to the other people who are looking to be successful as well. And I write for our blog, so I write a lot of craft posts about marketing and distribution and production and I manage some of the social media largely Twitter so if you if you tweeted us it's probably going to be me responding so 
you got there when? I got there, I think, about a, a little under or over a year after they launched. So at that time, did they have much of a community? Did they have much of a network built? I, they had a network in that they had attended a lot of film festivals and had been like panelists and, you know, they, they spoke on, um, they were part of the jury and things like that. And they, they had people who knew them because they listed their shows, but there wasn't a lot of ways for the filmmakers to talk to each other via Starable or via anyone because web series creators are sort of this like isolated little group of people who are trying to make something and have no idea where to start. When I joined, they were they were just starting to realize how powerful that community could be to each other and to Starable as a whole. And so I sort of helped them organize it in a way that the, the filmmakers could talk to each other, could get the most out of each other, and could get the most out of us in helping them. If I'm a content creator coming mm -hmm. to Starable, what kind of benefit do I get from being involved in that community. Um, I do have a show on Starable right now called Watch This Film, and that's how I, I kind of came to it through the IFP. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know if I'm or other people are kind of taking the best advantage of Starable. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Sure. So as a web series creator, um, being on the site is obviously a great start because you can get people to review your show. And then uh, if enough people are watching your show, you'll get to be trending, which means you'll be on our front page a little bit more often than others. So you have a higher chance of being discovered. Also, if you're a higher reviewed show in whatever category you're in, you're going to automatically come up in search results a lot uh, higher and a lot more uh, a better placement. So that's just the sterable.com itself is a, is a great place to sort of leverage, um, leverage your series that already exists, but our community forum at community.sterable.com, um, our, our filmmaker forum, is a place where you can network with other creators who might not necessarily be in your area, but might be exactly what you're looking for. You know, we have people who are producing things across like continents you know we have we have the this one creator who um is co-makes a web series with her friend in london so she's in new york and her friends in london and they each film half of the series and um you know and so so this is our, our community is really connecting people like that who want to make stuff and have the the capability but might not just have the support the team how do i get my show reviewed mm -hmm. do i is it do I go out and review other people's shows? Do I, like, is, is it kind of the thing where if I interact more with it, people will interact more with me? That's definitely one way we're, that we're seeing a lot of traction because uh, since web series is still a, a fairly new kind of um, style of art, a lot of the early fans tend to be web creators themselves. So uh, we've seen a lot of people um, show real interest in, like, exchanging promotion. So people will post, like, hey, I, I need somebody to retweet this. I would love to help promote your show. Do you want to exchange and uh, and that's something that I think is, is really unique and cool about the web series community is that there it's not a competition you know nobody's competing for a time slot they all want each other to succeed because if one of us succeeds then the the genre as a whole succeeds and so definitely reviewing other people's shows and tweeting about it and saying like hey I just reviewed this show on Starable and I think it's really funny everybody should watch it uh, that'll get their attention and they'll be more likely to check out your show and and things like that so I, I definitely think creating a community inherently increases your network of people that you can promote to and um, get help promoting from because they, you know, want to give back. If you promote them, they will feel um, happier towards you and they, they will be more more likely to, to check you out and, and share your stuff. With the content cr c community, content creator community, well, it's mm -hmm. hard to say, uh, <laughs> that you guys have developed, um, what have you... And the, you, like you've talked about these people connecting and mm -hmm. working together. You guys are actually organizing physical events for people to actually mm -hmm. be in the same country and, yeah. and meet and, and work together as well, right? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that, if you would. Sure. Uh, so it's a, a sort of new s event series that we're calling Starable IRL because we had a lot of success at our uh, New York meetups because basically what we do is, you know, we, we organize a, a happy hour. And for a couple of, uh, of hours once a month in New York, creators can get together and talk to each other. I've met a ton of people through that. I have, you know, become a producer on several people's shows just because I met them at these happy hours and it's, you know, really fun and great. But that's just New York. There's only so much we can do for New York creators, but there's a whole wide world of people who want to connect to each other in real life. So Starable IRL is sort of a, um, a an event series that allows the community to sort of take ownership of their community. And so people who are in places like Seattle or London or New Jersey or uh, Arizona, we have one coming up, they organize themselves because they want to meet people in their area. So they say, hey, I'd like your help um, sponsoring one 
these events. How how can I do that? And so they'll they'll contact us. We'll help them set up a, a Facebook event. We'll help them promote, and they'll get to meet people in their area. And that in turn brings more people in our community, so that we can uh, add them to our online community. And these people then get a, a real life network to work out of. So. Here's a situation. I know I'm just throwing this out. You didn't discuss mm-hmm. this before. Um, but say I'm a new creator. Say mm-hmm. I'm new, like I'd never done a web series before. Mm-hmm. And I want to, this is my first foray into that genre, that format. Mm-hmm. How do I get started? And how do I build? Because I think the hardest thing is getting people to work with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if you don't have a huge budget and right. you just can't pay a DP and mm-hmm. a sound person and all that. Mm-hmm. So if I want to get started, can Sterable help me there? Mm-hmm. Or... Um, you know, are there other ways that I can build my own community, either mm-hmm. online or in person, uh, to create the, the, well, the the bank of people that mm-hmm. I'm going to need to draw from right. if I'm going to actually get one of these things produced? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and Sterable actually serves to a lot of people like that. We have a, a lot of high school and college creators in our community, people who sort of grew up with web series being a little bit more normal than I would say um, even my generation. And that's been really cool because we get to see people who are like just at the beginning of their filmmaking journey. And um, so one of the things that we do to help is our blog, which I primarily write for. We have a, a, a huge, robust kind of collection of craft blogs that take you through pre-production, writing, production, post-production, and, you know, everything that comes after that. And so we've got the, like, a huge pool of just, like, written resources that you can tap into just to kind of get your your, your feet wet, just to sort of see what you're getting into. We also, on our forum, have a job posting section so that you can say, hey, I'm looking for a collaborator on this. Is anyone interested? We have one person who posted recently that she's written a script but doesn't really have any other friends in her area who, um, who write especially not script style and somebody commented like hey you, you you're actually kind of in my area do you want me to look it over and that she was like yes absolutely I would love that and now they're working together on it and it's this this really cool thing where you know where it's such a supportive community and I'm always floored by how supportive the people on there are anytime someone has a question like hey I need to buy a new camera I don't know which cam- camera to buy like eight different people will give their advice and say this is a budget option this is a less you know this is a more expensive op- option it seems like you guys are really cultivating more toward like fictional narrative series as opposed to a little bit I mean we we actually have a a, quite a few documentary makers in our community Um, we actually have a a documentary AMA coming up Uh, James Boo he's a a local creator he's created this web series one minute meal which is a series of sort of micro documentaries about the food culture in New York City which is phenomenal you should definitely check it out Um, but he's doing an AMA because I, I noticed that we have a couple of doc makers in our community who you know are getting something out of the crowdfunding uh experts and and things like that but we do sort of have a tendency to focus on narrative web series, but I, I don't think that that's necessarily something that we have to. And so um, I, I'm, I'm definitely looking to expand to, to more experts and resources for people who are doing nonfiction work because we have a lot of really, really talented nonfiction people in our in our community, and I want to make sure that they're getting as much out of this as the rest of us. Very cool. I mean, I think uh, the other thing is, w- and I talked about this a, a bit with AJ, and I don't know how much you're involved in this, but getting m- getting a show in front of someone mm-hmm. and getting to the point where I think the hardest part is getting in the room and mm-hmm. you know uh, and this whole idea of creating a show and getting an audience and then getting attention from that it just seems like that'll take a billion years mm-hmm. to do like it seems like like a, like a geological pace is, is in or- mm-hmm. and are there ways that you guys have kind of tried to ex- expedite that and say hey listen like i know that when i saw aj at ifp kind of talked about like well maybe you haven't seen this show it's only got 150 views online but it's a quality show right and that seems to be the mantra Mm -hmm. for you guys which is great um and that's that's why i wanted to be involved with it because i said you know you're sitting in the sea of youtube Mm -hmm. um and do you see that as becoming um, a bigger, better part of the organization in terms of putting your community in touch with people who can actually get their shows made and, and to a, a, a forum where people can actually see them? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think that one of the ways that we do that is by uh, empowering them to help each other out because each person has their own sort of distinct network, whether that's people who already know them or the four or five fans that their show has accrued. But no matter what, any creator you meet knows people that you don't. And if they help you promote, that obviously kind of exponentially expands. We also have a lot of marketing resources. I recently 
wrote a series of posts um, under the umbrella title, I Hate Marketing, because no filmmaker enjoys it, but we all have to do it, especially if we're making content for the web. So it's a series of sort of very actionable guides for how to um, make your marketing situation easier on yourself if you hate doing it. Uh, and we also, within that, had a series, or a, an article, excuse me, for distribution specifically, because there are a lot of um, emerging indie distribution options that I don't think people know about, like Sika TV or Stream Now TV. Uh, Seed and Spark just launched a streaming service, things like that. And so I, I compiled all the ones that I had found out about and researched and compiled how you submit to them, what kinds of things they're looking for, and uh, just sort of in one easy list so that if you don't want to just do the YouTube route, you have options. That's excellent, because I, I do feel like not enough of these things are known. Mm -hmm. And I also feel, you know, with some of the, like Vimeo to me is filmmakers talking to filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And YouTube is an endless sea of cat yep. videos and, and uh, <laughs> vloggers mostly. You know, no. and people getting hit in the genitals with baseball bats. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, how do you compete with that? Mm -hmm. But um, I, uh, so I think it's the curation is definitely needed. Mm -hmm. um, and do you guys, I asked Ajay this too, but I'll surprise you with this question. Sure. Do you guys see uh, Steerable as becoming a platform itself? So where people can actually embed mm -hmm. and stream from there. We, I know that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's definitely not my field. I'm not the engineer on the team. Um, but I know that our, our community has expressed interest in that. And so we, we're definitely thinking about it in ways to make the experience a little bit less click and go to another website. You know, we, we're definitely trying to keep people in the terrible ecosystem that way that they can they don't just find one show and leave. They can find one show, watch it, enjoy it, and then click a, a related show in the tab next to it and just sort of keep watching great indie content that they might never have found otherwise uh, but in terms of an actual like actionable business plan I can't really speak to that just because I have no idea what goes into that but uh, but we're definitely thinking about that for the future because we want to make it easier for audiences to find great content very cool and I know you guys are going to be doing more with like film festival events mm -hmm. and stuff like that uh, coming up uh, hopefully uh, in 2018 mm -hmm. um, anyway I wanted to thank you I'll leave you with uh, one more question so if there's if there's anything that I didn't ask you about or any <laughs> bit of advice that you could give mm -hmm. a content creator looking to get into this e either into web series or just kind of boost their online profile mm -hmm. or you know maybe that lost soul who's a who's a writer or a director who mm -hmm. who, who doesn't have people to help make their vision happen mm -hmm. is, is, what advice would you give to those people on like how to start how to get going or, mm -hmm. or maybe uh, if you're stagnant how to reinvigorate yeah of course you know and and build that sure so for meeting other creators and sort of building a community of filmmakers that you can ask like advice from and things like that, uh, which is something that I benefited from, you know, tremendously as a filmmaker myself. Uh, one thing is just start reaching out to people. You know, everyone's email is on the internet somewhere, and even if their email isn't somewhere, you can probably find them on at least three social media platforms. So reach out. I reached out to a, a show creator on Instagram once just because uh, their show auto followed me back. I didn't realize it was auto at the time, but I was like, oh, cool, I really like this show, and so I, I messaged them and I was like, hey, do you mind if I pick your brain sometime because you guys are doing such cool things and I would love to sort of do that myself. And they immediately responded. And now she and I are like good personal friends and she taught me so much. And so if there are people that you are a fan of or people that you respect who are doing cool things in the space that you want to do cool things in, reach out. The worst that can happen is they don't ever respond to you. But there's so many creators out there who are willing and open to help out the next generation of creators or uh, the, their same generation of creators. Uh, and so that's for, for that one. Uh, in terms of building an audience, I would say that one big thing that people sort of don't realize when they're building like a social media presence is that they only tweet or Facebook about themselves, which seems to make sense because it's their Twitter account, but that's not what people are going to follow you for because, you know, you don't have The Rock on your TV show or on your web series. So nobody cares about your stuff specifically. So if you start curating content that is similar, but is slightly more um, thematic or popular, you're going to start getting people who are interested in that content. And if it's similar to yours, they're going to stick around when you start promoting your show. So if you curate content on a blog or on your Twitter account or whatever that is thematically similar to your show, whether that's comedy, whether that's documentaries, whether that's a, a particular issue like women in film, Black Lives Matter, or something like that, people are going to start following you for that content. And if yours is similar, they're not going to bat an, eye, uh, an eyelash when you know you start promoting your own thing. Yeah, and I also find there's, there's a big difference between um, I'll like that and I'll actually click on it and watch mm -hmm. it. Um, true. And getting people to convert to that. You really do have to sort of ingratiate uh, and, and get put out enough stuff. Mm -hmm. And it takes a, I think it takes a high volume, too. Mm -hmm. you know, Definitely. I, I mean, I, I think I, I just 
on Instagram, uh, we're at like 500 and something followers. But I, to get that, to get to 500, I had to put out a thousand posts. Yep. Uh, and it really is this kind of like, you know, three times a day, every day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we we did what you were talking about. We created this show. We created our blog because we found that we could speak to the creator community mm -hmm. and uh, that would be an audience for us as well. And, we, yeah. and, and it's all about give back and help. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, having people like you on the show that mm -hmm. can add, add value to them um, and really kind of reach, it's hard to do that though. It's it not is. easy. No, it's not. Um, so I, it, I applaud anybody who's, mm -hmm. who's reaching out there and, and trying to, and get to an audience, mm -hmm. which um, I, fi I find it, you know, a lot of times you're in your own echo chamber online. Yeah. So trying to break out of that can be mm -hmm. very difficult. Um, but uh, I think what you guys are doing is great. I hope it takes off. I hope it's really successful. Mm -hmm. It seems like you guys Thank are building you. a great community right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're all thankful for anybody who cares <laughs> to look at our stuff, uh, especially if you're doing fictional narrative content. Mm -hmm. It's not something that everybody clicks on, especially on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it's, it's the type of thing where we'll probably start to see more of those because they're needed. Yeah. You know, um, people want entertainment mm -hmm. and but where do i find it how do i you know where do i look for it and what's right for me kind of thing right um and these things don't get reviewed a mm -hmm. lot of times so yep. um having people review each other is great um maybe at some point you guys will bring in outside reviewers or people who review television mm -hmm. you know to professionally maybe. review people mm -hmm. and, and uh, see if you get some ink for uh, for people um Anyway, thank you so much for help for coming in. I really yeah, thank uh, you. appreciate you coming in, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you. I mean, I know that you guys are going to do a festival in 2018. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to cover that. Exciting. And talk to you guys some more. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks so much, Bree, for coming thank in. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. I'd like to thank our guest, Brie Castellini. If you'd like to see more from Behind the Rabbit Productions, check out our website, btrp.nyc. And on behalf of Jason Godby and myself, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.